welcome to Friday's second edition of Cracking the Cryptic. We had a bonus crossword video earlier for those of you who enjoy such things. Um, but we're going to be having a look in this video at a puzzle called Wormholes Remix by Nordi. I've realized I've got the wrong glasses on. That's not a good start, is it? Wormholes Remix by Nordi. And this puzzle has a 100% approval rating on Logic Masters Germany. Four stars out of five for difficulty. Nordi, Nordi in the preamble uh, on Logic Masters Germany reckoned it was about three and a half stars worth of difficulty. And that is very typical, i.e. authors of puzzles underestimating how difficult their puzzles actually are. Um, but the comments are lovely on this one. There's many people just saying it's an absolute revelation. Now, I will confess, I have read the rules um, before I turned on the webcam and they were not, they, they didn't instantly go into my brain and sort of click. Uh, so I'm looking forward to reading them again. I hope I will understand them. I've also snipped, um, I've snipped something here which uh, I haven't studied in great detail, but hopefully this will also help us to understand what's going on when we get to that point in a moment or two's time. But before we do that, what do we need to talk about? A few things, let me get my list. Um, I've told you about the crossword video. Um, I should tell you, oh, I should also mention yesterday's video, which so many of you have given kind comments on. Uh, this was Mark and I saying thank you to Demono by attempting Demono's Everything is right uh, puzzle. This is an I mean, it is an extraordinary puzzle. I mean, if you dwell on it for any moments, you sort of think that is extraordinary. It is a it's a Sudoku puzzle where you can solve it normally, treating all the clues as true. And then you have to solve it again, treating all the clues as false. Um, it's just, it's really incredible. Anyway, Mark and I attempted that in this, you know, helping each other to solve which is something we haven't done before uh, and um, yeah it was it was lovely to get the feedback so check out that video if you're interested in such things I'll try and remember to put a link on the screen now um, next I've got some birthdays to do now I was going to start with a very very special birthday to a young lady who turns two today Juliet I hope that you will I hope you understand enough to realize that I'm saying happy birthday to you um, I think you probably are old enough to have had, had a little bit of cake. Did you get cake? I hope you did. But your dad, Dan, wrote to us and, uh, well, he said that sometimes, um, sometimes I've even managed to get you to go to sleep, Juliet, which, I mean, it's, it's quite remarkable how many people I get to go to sleep. It, it's quite remarkable. I don't just don't suffer badly from narcolepsy and just find myself falling asleep to my own uh, dulcet tones in inverted commas. Um, but anyway, Julia, I hope you have a wonderful day today. And apparently your daddy is going to be showing you this video when you're old enough to to understand. And that's <laughs> that's that's quite a cool thought. Um, anyway, one more birthday to do today, and that is to Matt. Matt, your girlfriend Laura wrote to us and said you'd appreciate a shout out. Uh, and also the birthday wishes are not just from her, but also from your dogs, Merlin, Holly, Bracken, Bramble and Gizmo. There's some great names of dogs there. Uh, so Matt, I hope you have a brilliant day with chocolate cake, of course. Um, other than that, the only other thing to mention is what's going on on Patreon, where we have been thrilled to hear that so many children have been having a go at the kids Sudoku hunt. That is what it was made for. So big thanks to Panthera and the Asylum for making us a kids Sudoku hunt. And it, it's just brilliant. It's brilliant. We get we get a few emails a day from people going, I introduced my daughter to this. You know, she's only 11 and she's managed to solve the whole thing and really likes it. So that that is fantastic. Um, so if you, if you are a parent, or even if you're a big kid yourself, do have a go at the hunt, you'll enjoy it. And you've got one day left. Tomorrow is the deadline for Demono's novella slash Sudoku hunt, The Jewels of Osiris. So check that out too. Now, with that said and done, why don't we read the rules of Wormholes Brackets Remix? I should know why it's called Brackets Remix. I, in the back of my mind, I have the idea that this is a reworking of an earlier naughty puzzle, but I could be totally off kilter with that, so don't hold me to that. These are the rules anyway. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Um, digits along an arrow sum to the digit in that arrow circle. So those three cells sum to this. So if this was one, two, and three, 
this would be a 6. Ah! <laughs> because 1 plus 2 plus 3 equals, you guessed it, 6. Um, now, here's where it gets stranger. Numbers in the corner of cages indicate the number of cells in that 3x3 three three box that form wormholes with other boxes. Oh, oh, I should get that. That actually could be important. One second. Right, sorry, I'm back. Um, it was a delivery, so I had to go and open the door. Um, now, where were we up to in the rules? Oh, we were getting to the strange part. Yeah, so numbers in the corner of cages indicate the number of cells in that 3x3 three three box that form wormholes with other boxes. A cell in a cage in box A, this is where it gets complicated, a cell in a cage in box A. Oh, let's actually look at the example while we're doing this forms a wormhole with the central cell of box B, where the cell's position in box A, e.g. top right cell, so that's this example, isn't it? So this top right cell, um, hang on, I've lost my place, matches the position of box, box B in the grid, e.g. the top right box. Okay, two cells in a wormhole relationship both contain the same digit. Okay. All right, let's let we're going to come and have a look back at this in a moment. I think I get it, but I just want to carry on reading the rules. Note, cage totals only count the number of wormholes that look out of that box and into the central cells of other boxes i.e. a wormhole from another box that looks into the central cell of a cage is not counted. Right, okay, we'll come back to that. Right, so what's this saying? This is saying that these, t it's saying that A and A are the same digit because they're in a wormhole relationship. And if I understand that correctly, the way to view this is that because this A square is in the top right corner of its 3x3 three three box, it is cap it, if we view the grid, the whole the whole 9x9 nine nine, as sort of, you know, if we, we view this, this cell here as equivalent to this box, the D cell is the equivalent to the ninth box because it's in the bottom right hand corner of the grid, as is the ninth box. The ninth box of the Sudoku is in the bottom right hand corner. Okay, I know. Okay, this is becoming clearer. This is becoming clearer to me. That's why B's. So that's B is in the fourth position, or it's in the middle left position within its box, and it's also the B three by three is in the middle left position of all the three by threes in the puzzle. Okay, so where? How, how does? How does this? So. So they form a wormhole whenever okay so whenever those digits match i think they form a wormhole number of cells uh okay and then and then the cage totals that we were given so this in this example that's a four that's saying only these four digits form these wormholes i only these four cells match to the central cells of these other three by three boxes. It's a very peculiar rule. So I think if I understand correctly, there is a sort of negative constraint there because if this digit, let's think about this cell. Let's label this E. <laughs> now E, if I understand it correctly, is looking over into this box here because this is the middle right box, which is with the equivalent of the middle right cell of this three by three. And I think we could say that this cell is not allowed to be E. Because if this was E, this clue should be 5. So we could say that is not E. So E would be somewhere else in that box. I think that's what this is saying. Now, it's also saying cage totals only count the number of wormholes that look out of the box. So if something else forms a wormhole with this cell, 
which is the sort of the place that the wormhole would come out in box one, that doesn't contribute to this total. So let's try and think about that. So imagine this square here is a one. Oh, how could I? <laughs> I, should, I should just be able to do this. So if if that square is a one, then I think that there is a wormhole from box five to box one. I think that's I think that's how I understand it. But but this four would not include the fact that this this one was in a wormhole relationship because this is an exit from a wormhole, not an entry to a wormhole. So this is absolutely mental is where we're reaching. This is this is the position we have reached. We have decided that Nord, Nordy is off the scales mad and we are going to try and understand Nordy's mind in order to solve the puzzle, um, which is only three and a half stars out of five for difficulty. But it's five stars out of five to understand the rules. <laughs> Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. I'm going to take the low hanging fruit and grasp it with both hands. So this square and this square, but, mm, but maybe no other squares. Are there, those squares are at least six. And um, that's because the minimum we could put on the arrow would be a one, two, three and a one, two, three. Now, unfortunately, these arrows bend in a most peculiar discombobulating way, which means that these circles, I think, could could be as low as four, because if we did something like this, uh, that would add up to four. And we could obviously do the same thing there. So that's bad. Um, <laughs> which means I'm going to have to do wormholes, doesn't it? Right. So do we... B I haven't got a clue how to do this, actually. I really haven't. So do we have to highlight the centres of the grid? Let's set, let's highlight the cent central cells and let's have a think. So those are all of the possible exits from wormholes, aren't they? I think... Now, now we have we don't actually know the total number of wormholes in this puzzle. It occurs to me to say I don't know. Well, unless there's some uh, some deduction we can make from the total of these cages, we've got 11, 13 and 7, which is 20. So there are 20 wormholes that have to shoot out through just nine wormhole exits. When I say 20 wormhole entrances, that's 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 what's being contributed by the cages. Now we've also got three, three boxes that don't have any totals. I would love to know if there's some reason, like um, let's just take a you know, nine, nine times three, 27. Is there some reason why the wormholes that appear in these, in these three boxes would add up to seven? Just mull that over for a moment. And would it, would it matter if we, even if we did know that? I'm afraid I'm not sure I know the answer. I, I can't I can't immediately see why that needs to be true. Right, so that this might not be how you meant to think about this. Um Um uh, sorry okay so maybe it's maybe we have to do this differently maybe we've got to I have no intuition about how to how to tackle this either which is a bit strange normally at least my brain gives me one or two ideas that we can think about my brain gave me one idea and I fear that that might be a bad idea so I've got 20 wormhole entrances that shoot out through nine wormhole exits Um, 
And I've got box a box here which has got six wormhole entrances and a box here that's got five wormhole entrances. So I don't really have any idea. So well let's think about this. So if this square is a wormhole entrance, that's that's saying those two digits are the same, I think. Because we look, this is this is pointing at the box one, isn't it? It's the top left box, so those two cells would be the same. If this one is in a wormhole relationship, that's pointing. Ah, uh, that's pointing its own. Oh, right. Okay. Oh, I, okay. Well, this square is interesting because I don't think this can be in a wormhole relationship. Oh, right, right, I'm starting to see something. Okay, none of those cells can be in a wormhole relationship. Yeah, ah, right, okay. The, the cloud, the cloud draws apart and, and the sunlight comes through and shines upon Simon. Right, okay, let's think about this cell. So if that cell was in a wormhole relationship, it's pointing at its own box, isn't it? It's the top middle box, which is this one, which would be saying that this cell contains the same digit as this cell. And that clearly cannot be the case because that's going to break normal Sudoku rules. So this one is not, it's not in a wormhole relationship. But I don't think this one is either because this one is pointing at box five and those two digits would be the same. This one is pointing at box eight, and those two digits would be the same. So none of these three digits are capable of being wormhole entrances, and that means all six of those digits are in wormhole relationships, and it means that we can basically plot digits around the grid that have to be the same. Those two have to be the same. What Actually, what, should we do this in a sort of strategic way? Hmm... There is a question. Well, yeah, I'm going to use my favorite color first. So this one, that's going to box four. Those two digits are the same. Um, this one is going to box seven. So those two digits are the same. This one is going to box three. So those two digits are the same. This is, this is crazy, isn't it? Now, all red will go those two. These ones can be yellow and these ones can be purple now now what have we learned right now we've got to be careful don't we because this three clue for example doesn't count this digit as um as a thingy thingy <laughs> as, a, as a as a wormhole a wormhole at all because this is a wormhole exit from the point of view uh, okay so what I'm going to do now I'm going to I'm going to do something else I'm going to label up those so the the, the I'm allowed to label a cell when it's a wormhole entrance I'm not allowed to label this cell when it's an exit so I, I, I have achieve, I've, I've achieved my count of six for box two. So probably it's this box now, I think. Um, so let's, let's, let me just think about this. Hang on. So this, if this is a wormhole, it's, it's got to be that color, hasn't it? It's got to be the color of the middle cell of box one so that would be green can't see why that's impossible this one would be that color, that color which of course i don't know i'm just mulling over the sudoku implications of that i don't think there are any that would be red this would be I can't, I'm just bad at this. Orange, this would be orange. This one would be that one. I can't see why this is problematic. Um, this one would be yellow. This one would be blue. 
I mean, I can see that obviously if that is blue, then it puts a blue in one of those. But I, I mean, why, why is that in any way restricted? This, this box is horrible. It does nothing. Oh, that, ah, right. Right, okay, I'm going to label this as green just for a moment. I think green is going to be my colour for cells that cannot be wormholes. Now, this can't be a wormhole because it's pointing in its own box. So what we need to do is to go around the grid and any, any cell in a box that's pointing as its own box can't be a wormhole entrance. So that cell can't be a wormhole entrance. That one can't be. You see, this, this is really interesting. There's some peculiar... This box is more potent, isn't it? We worked out none of those could be wormhole entrances. That can't be a wormhole entrance because it would point at this square and lead to a repeated digit. Uh, this can't be. This... Ah, now I'm getting confused. That's pointing at itself. <laughs> That's pointing at itself. Can you have a wormhole that goes... Uh... So, hang on. If that's a wormhole, it's pointing at itself. Is that fine under the rules? Can a wormhole sort of enter here and pop out in the same position? I don't know. Numbers in cages indicate the number of cells that that form that form wormholes with other boxes but this one hasn't got a cage total so i don't know i don't think i think perhaps that could be a wormhole to itself that can't be a wormhole that can't be a wormhole and that can't be a wormhole and there we go <laughs> that's it's not exactly great is it I, I think what i need to do is to understand why these three digit why are those three cells positions yeah so it's the same in this box isn't it it's exactly the same logic that can't be a wormhole cell because it points to that one and they'd be in the same 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 column so this and that this would point to that, which would be in the same column. So those can't be wormholes. That is pointing to that. Yeah, that's pointing to that. So these two can't be wormholes. The central cell is the is the one that's that's difficult. I have a feeling those two cells can't be wormholes because that would point to that. That would point to that. Yes. Okay. Now, is it, is it something to do with the fact that, I'm wondering if it's something to do with the fact that you can't, if you think about two, um, two arrows, two three cell arrows, the, these two arrows, is it something to do with the fact that it's not possible for all of these digits to be different from all of those digits? And that's because if this was six different digits, they would add up to at least 21, because that's the triangular number for six. One plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six. And that's more than we can make two circles add up to. We can make two circles add up to 18, but not 21. So I know that some of the digits here have to repeat down here. Blue can't be. Uh, blue, blue is not on this arrow, and blue is not on this arrow. Yeah, but I'm not going to run into trouble with that until I can do a lot of eliminating. Um, do I don't get the same? No, I don't. I was, I was just, I, I should be able to see that straight away, but I was just going down this column and thinking, do I get the same effect in this square, which is mimicking that square, isn't it? This square is mimicking, oh, that can't be red. Ah, that square can't be a wormhole entrance because it, it would be the same as that, which is apparently there in box, uh, box two. 
So if this if this was a wormhole entrance in this box and contributing to this count of three, this would have to be red, and that would that would cause a clash in the row. So that's not possible. What about that one? That one is the same as no, that's the same as yellow. Oh, this is so weird. <laughs> <laughs> so something's going on in this box now for reasons that are completely beyond me but that square would be yellow which is that and that, and that square would be purple which is, oh good grief this is ridiculous and don't tell me this square is mimic is mimicking that one which is there now in box box two so that can't be and this one is that one which would be there this is amazing right so this box here has only got three possible wormhole entrances which are these three but this square was a wormhole exit from this box so this is now a wormhole entry and it's going to box five so box right so this is this is green because from this box's perspective this cell has to be treated as an entrance to a wormhole so so the way that the spaceship travels is it goes into this wormhole here pops out here and immediately goes off down here um, and that for that gets a one um, because it's the first wormhole entrance we've discovered but these two must also be wormhole entrances now that one uh, okay we need a new color don't we because this one goes to that square so that square loses not its religion but it loses its greenliness in a way although it's still well it's tricky this actually it's very very difficult to understand but basically i'm going to label this with a two just to indicate it's the second wormhole in this box this square is sort of green from the perspective of this box because it can't be a wormhole entrance from this box but it is a wormhole exit from that box um, and therefore this square is now what's what color is that that is this color so those two are the same color which is deeply annoying because I don't think I know what color that is well okay what we do know is that is a color we have already colored <laughs> because this cell and this cell being the same color means that in this box we are looking at either oh we're not looking at right so this is red or yellow by sudoku let me just check that so i think this is red or yellow now because because we've, we've learned these two are the same let's give this a three label these in this box this cell is either fluorescent green well it's not that because it's already appeared in that column orange it's not that because that's already in this in this column so it's either red or yellow now how do we know which that, which of those this is the answer is we hmm, i don't know how we know that i know that this right so this is a wormhole exit isn't it so that gets no number right okay so where are we now we have now learnt more about the world than we knew before uh, well i don't know if it's worth labeling but there's definitely greens and greys down here i don't know whether i can label that i suppose i can look there's no cage here so i can't run into problems regarding wormhole entrances and things and right i i have a <laughs> i've got a bad feeling that my strategy for solving this puzzle is going to involve investigating all of the white white cage cells and seeing whether or not they can be wormholes or not so that would be green yeah that can be this one would be 
No, see, that one can't be anymore, I don't think. Because if this was a wormhole, it's, it's going there. Ah, yeah, okay. So once you get, once you get wormholes in a column, I want to say you can't have any more wormhole entrances in the column. Because this square is always mapping to this one, which has already appeared. This one's always mapping to this one, which has already appeared. This one is mapping to this one, which has already appeared. We don't know what it is, but it has appeared. Right, so all of these all turn green, because that, that logic must be consistent across boxes. And that's a bit more useful, because suddenly we've got many less opportunities for wormhole entrances and exits in these columns. But there's still quite a lot having said that what about that square that one is that one so that's okay that comes out that one i've done this one but that's right isn't it because that would be the same as that one yeah that's fine that's fine so we end up in a pattern of so we've got the two here are from those four squares. And the two here are from five squares because why can't I get, why can't I do better in this one then? Is it just the geometry? So that one is the equivalent of a yellow, which I don't have in this box or in this row column. That one's the equivalent of gray, which doesn't see it. That one's the equivalent of orange, which doesn't see it. That one's the equivalent of yellow. That one's the equivalent of purple. Ah, no. Okay, sorry. Um, what about... I've got a lot of green in this row. Can This is a strange one, isn't it? This is the one that could be a wormhole to itself, but we don't care because it's not in a cage. What about that one? That one is referencing orange. So that one is not a wormhole entrance. That one would reference green, and they can't be the same digit, because green and yellow are different. So that's not in. Um, oh, no, I don't know. The, the problem is the side boxes yeah this was very useful wasn't it this was very useful but i don't think anything's really changed so far we looked at this box earlier didn't we and we didn't think anything had changed in it or i didn't think anything had changed in it anyway maybe that's is that true so I imagine we're looking at those squares as being the most constrained. Um, that one is the equivalent now of grey. And that's fine. I just think it's fine. I just don't think this works. This one is the equivalent of orange. This one is the equivalent of yellow. Uh, do I know how, do I know whether that's different from that one or not? Oh golly, this is complicated. This is so complicated for me. I'm sorry. Um, This one could be red. And that one is borrowing yellow. I don't think I do. I don't think I can rule this out. I'm not sure. I don't think I can. And that one is Well, that's that one which is yellow or red. But yellow and red are in this column. I don't understand why that one sh should be suddenly ruled out. See, this one I don't think can be 
a wormhole entrance because red and yellow have appeared in the column and yet this would be the same as that which is red or yellow so that one apparently is out well that's okay what about that one can that be a wormhole that would be that would be saying purple and green are the same digit. The purple and green are not the same digit because they're different in box two. So that's not a wormhole entrance. Okay, so in this box now, I've got this down to six possible wormhole entrances and there are five, uh, sorry, there are five, yeah, six possibles, but there are five to find. So there's only one of these that's not a wormhole entrance. That's a, yeah, okay. Yeah, so I was thinking about this one and wondering about it, and that that's the same, isn't it? Because it's just very peculiar. It's like a weird form of indexing, this, this puzzle. But because that's in the same relative position as this one, it's obviously also going to see red and yellow, and therefore it cannot map to that. Right, right, so it's about relative positions in boxes. Right, and that is fascinating. Okay, I've got something here. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm not going to look at this box on its own. I'm going to look at it together with box six. I'm going to look at those two together because between these two boxes I've got to come up somehow with seven wormhole entrances but remember because we've just been thinking about these two squares if I make that square a wormhole entrance I can't also make that square a worms wormhole entrance can I because those two digits will point at the same cell in the grid so only one of those can be a wormhole entrance so only so if we, if we look at those three cells or no, no, let's look at those five cells and ask how many possible wormhole entrances there could be. Well, there can only be three because there's one of those two, one of these two, and one of those two is possible. So this is three. Those are in the same position. So that's a fourth maximum. And I've got to get to seven. So all, all three of these have to be wormhole entrances. Now... Right, so look at, look at this position. We know we've got to find three wormhole entrances from these white squares. Well, this one must therefore be a wormhole entrance because we need one of those two to be in because we can't have both, both of the ones in the same position. Um, that, th these two are impossible. So in fact, that's in as well, isn't it? Because because this one can't be. So here we go. Now, now we're getting somewhere. So now that one is the... Uh, oh, I thought that was equivalent of that one for a moment because I'm going completely mad. That is the equivalent of purple because that's in the ninth position. This is in the sixth position, so that's become yellow. And if that's yellow, and I think it is, that therefore is not yellow. So that's blue, which means that is blue. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> Not that you've, you've warped my brain. <laughs> you've made me completely imbecilic. <laughs> anyway, that's red. Uh, this is now red. Um, this... So one of these is definitely a wormhole entrance. One of these is definitely a wormhole entrance. Now hang on. In this column, this must be a wormhole entrance because this can't be. So that's in position four, which is that one. So that is an orange digit. Um, and by the way, my next move is going to be to look along this row <laughs> because this is what I'm learning from this, that there are very strange going th things going on as soon as you get digits in a row or column, especially in the central positions. Um, let me just mull this for a moment or two. So I might, right, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to, because I know one of these is 
a wormhole entrance. I know, oh yeah, yeah, this is useful. One of these is therefore that color, the green color. So one, one of these is green. I'm going to give it a flash. This is not green, therefore, because it's, there's definitely a green in one of these. Now there's definitely a blue in one of those. So we're going to have to be very careful about how we treat these pencil marks, but one of these is a one of these is a, yeah one of these is a gray so that's not a gray anymore and one of these is a red um okay so how many how many wormhole entrances have we got? We know that is a wormhole entrance for sure in this box. So that's one of the two that can appear. There's only one more in this box. And in this box, I think we know that one is, don't we? So that's the first one. And we know that one is. So that's the second one. And we need three more. So of these colored squares, three of them are in. Now... Let's check these squares then. Um, if that was a wormhole entrance, yeah, it would be yellow. I'm, yeah, it, there is something weird going on. So this can't because it would be orange and it would clash here. So these two must also come out by exactly the same logic. And now this box has only got... It's only got three white squares, two of which have to be wormholes. So... Yeah, this is that's really weird the way this works, isn't it? It's very clever because now if we were to make all three of these squares wormhole entrances, none of these could be because of the way the rule works. If, because this, these are both equivalent to red. So if you make that red, you can't make that red. So if all three of these are in, none of those are in, and that would have to be two wormhole entrances, which won't work. So it's not possible for all three of those to be in, which means that's definitely a wormhole entrance. And therefore that is three in this box, which means this, oh no, hang on, have I made a mistake here? Oh no, that's fine. <laughs> I was about to say this can't be, <laughs> because for some reason I thought I could do Sudoku, but that's not true at all, is it? That's not true at all. This is not in the same position as this. This one is the equivalent of that one, of purple. And I think this has to be a wormhole entrance because if both of those were in, I'm taking both of these out. But I know I need at least one of these in. So this is definitely in and therefore it's definitely purple. And that is the first wormhole entrance we found in this box. So one of these, ah, ah, because one of these must be in as a wormhole entrance, one of these is definitely not in, and therefore that must be in in order to reach the count. And if that's in, that's not in. So that turns light green. Oh, I see. I see. The effect of this one is not on this one. It's on this one, which now can't be a wormhole entrance because it would repeat blue in the column. So now we're in a position where either red or green. Yeah, there's, okay, so there's a weird, yeah. So there, <laughs> there is the strangest X-wing now of wormhole entrances. Not a, not a sentence I thought I'd be saying today, but there is. So, because either, if this is a wormhole entrance, then this, box has got its two wormhole entrances so this can't be a wormhole entrance which means that's required to be a wormhole entrance so you're either going to end up with a wormhole entrances here and here or here and here that's forced well it is forced but i've just realized that that means that means this is not a wormhole entrance because it just breaks sudoku doesn't it this is this is magical it's absolutely magical. If that is a wormhole entrance, let's just go through this one more time. If that's a wormhole entrance. That can't be. So that is a wormhole entrance. But that means, look, 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 look. 
we get this pattern, but I've got to put red in this box. But that would imply that red was the same color as dark green, orange, or blue. But it can't be because red's in the same box as those up there. So this is wrong. This is wrong. So this is not a wormhole entrance. That, that gets light greened. This is a wormhole entrance. This is therefore not a wormhole entrance and gets light greened. And therefore that is, so we get this limb of the X as our unwinding of the X wing. Now, oh no, we, oh, I thought we were going to get red in this box, but we're not. Um, ah, ah, beautiful. <laughs> but now this red means that can't be a wormhole entrance because it would be red which means that gets greened which means this is therefore this one and therefore that one goes here by Sudoku I don't know if that's an entrance <laughs> we're gonna to have to work that out in a moment no it's not an entrance because were it to be an entrance it would go um it would be there wouldn't it it would it well this is this if it was a wormhole is plotting to that and it would need to plot to that, and that's against the rules. Um, so that's not a wormhole entrance, so that gets greened. Uh, this one would have to be blue. That might be possible. Um, okay, so let's think about this box. We've got, I think we've got three possibilities. Yeah, no, we haven't. We haven't got three at all because that one would be green, wouldn't it? As in dark green, and it can't be because it's plotting to box number one. So these two are both wormhole entrances. It's the only places we can put them. Yeah, let, in fact, let me let me just go through this and make sure that I keep track very carefully of my wormhole entrances. That's the second one there. We don't know about that one because that could be an in and out, but we don't care about that one either. Um, but in this box I've not got any wormhole entrances so I think that needs to be red and that's great because that doesn't seem to break the rules of Sudoku so that's the first one in this box and this needs to be the second one which is blue and that gets a two little moniker then so therefore there might be a little bit of children's noise I'm afraid it's just end of school time um, and they're all on the trampoline um, Okay, don't get distracted, Simon. It won't help you to solve Nordy's nonsense puzzle. <laughs> right, okay, so... Right, hang on a moment then. Do we get... Because we've actually now, if you look at this, we have filled in all of the cage, all of the wormhole entrances in the puzzle that we've been given. We have literally labelled them all. So, that, so the role of light green now has has fallen away i think so literally now we have a coloring puzzle together with some arrows now that i can see red goes in the corner down here let's hope red oh well red could turn out to be three <laughs> although i th actually uh, the other thing i think we need to do now is to get rid of our uh to get rid of our wormhole entrances and exits because these these no longer play a role do they although if i do finish the puzzle i am going to add up how many wormhole entrances and entrance exits and entrances there are in these boxes to see whether it would have been a fascinating total and maybe that well that would have allowed me to do the puzzle more straightforwardly um all right where's orange in this box orange has to be here Where's yellow in this box? It's got to be in one of those. Where's yellow in this box? It's got to be here. <laughs> Where is... Oh no, I thought I was going to keep going and it didn't. Um, so we've actually got... Do, is the, Are we going to have a complete colouring puzzle? Am I going to have to label everything up with a colour? Why is this missing a colour? Oh, this is missing dark green, which is down here. Yes. Okay, so because, because this is dark green, there's a green down here, and therefore green in row 8, look, we can place it on on an arrow, which might be interesting at some point. I've stopped thinking about arrows for a while. 
blue blue is on neither arrow neither of the most interesting arrows um purple purple is in one of those two squares um i don't know blue is in one of these two squares Sorry. Oh, well, what about this row? I've got six colours on this row. I have not got. I've not got grey. So grey is in one of the. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Grey in this box is in one of two places, and possibly on the arrow, which might be worth recording. Grey is on this arrow, but we know the contents of this arrow and the contents of this arrow have to differ a little. And well, look. Yeah, they do well no actually they, would, they might not have to differ but we know that that's wrong what I just said we do know that they can't be six different digits so we do know there's a repeat and that repeat could now be the grey digit oh, I've got it I've got it right right Look at the colours. Looking at look at this beautiful pattern of um, sort of a five a five dotage there, and look at that. That's purple, and that's all my my beautiful colours that I put in box two. So this square here is not a beautiful colour. It's not one of these. What does that mean about this in terms of its position in this box? It's on an arrow. So this is on an arrow, and yet it itself is at least a 6. So this must be a 6, and this must be a 612 arrow, and that must be a 9 QED. There we go. <laughs> um, so this is 126. I think that square... Um, that square's grey. Okay, and grey is not 6. So that square is a 1 or a 2. So this square is a 1 or a 2. Well, okay, yes, there we go. That's lovely, isn't it? Because now I know that's grey. Because the only way of making up a one, two, three arrow is with the digit, or a six arrow, is with the digits one, two, and three. So this grey cell, which is a one, two, or a three, because it's on this arrow and is not six, <laughs> therefore must be on this arrow and must be exactly there, which means that that square is grey. This square is not grey. These two squares are yellow oh is that saying yellow's three i think that's saying yellow's three because because i know that whatever is not yellow well yeah yellow is not on this one two six arrow so one and two are on this arrow and one or and two are on this arrow so the only thing that yellow could be is 3. So yellow is 3 wherever it occurs. Now these squares therefore have to be 3. Which means 3 is in one of those two squares. Oh nearly 3 is in one of those two squares. Um, <laughs> um, right so these two. Do I know what those two are now? I mean, literally that. Yeah. Okay. One of one of these is six. Oh, I see. Yes. Okay. Where does six go in this box? That's a good question. Because six can't be in either of those squares, so it must be in the other white square. Because six is a digit that I've not shaded yet. So this digit, I want to say, is a one or a two. I think that's right. Because every other colour has appeared in this row, and the only two uncoloured digits in the puzzle are a 1 and a 2, the 1 or the 2 that's not the grey digit, and the 6. So this is a 1 or a 2, and we probably need to give it a colour. Um, now, we could make, we've got a choice. We could do black or we could do light green. I think I'm going to go light green. So one of these is 3, and one of these is light green. Um, I'm sure that's important for some reason. 
can we can we can we do anything else it's going to be something to do with these um ah oh, hang on there's a one or a two on this arrow I was, I was going to just to complete my thought process such as it is I presume what we've got to do here is to use these other arrows somehow to disambiguate everything um but that could be incorrect right green which is this digit which is on an arrow is not a one two or a three so it's at least a four and this can't be greater than eight now because nine is in its column so that's a maximum of eight so this this square is a maximum of five because if it was any bigger um you couldn't make these add up to a low enough number to keep this down to eight so this is four or five ah this is right this is great this is great this is this is light green because if this was not light green what could it be it can't be three so it would have to be four and four plus well four plus four plus one is nine which is not going to work so that has to be as low as we can make it which makes it light green which means that's this is great this is so pretty isn't it so that's light green which means that is three which means that is yellow which means yellow is down on one of those two squares this is a one two pair that's three so this can still be seven um and and these two squares include a six don't oh no hang on i'm confused now well they do include a six because six is an uncolored digit but they include something oh that's okay that's fair enough they include dark green which i hadn't realized could go down here right right so what does this mean maybe we've got to label up these squares with fours and fives wherever they appear <laughs> um, has that helped us uh, maybe May or maybe not I don't know um, oh come on Simon how do we do this now we could right okay by sudoku i believe that square is gray so that's a one or a two so by sudoku this square is green light green i should say and now by sudoku this square should is purple because we've not put purple in this box and we know purple and six are most distinct from this box's sort of color coding uh that was jolly exciting for a moment or two and has it done yes okay purple in the middle box goes here right okay so um, yes purple in box eight goes here okay so what are these these are one of these is six we know that and um, we should be able to get oh one of them is blue oh yeah look, look 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 blue where does blue go in this box it goes there so that means that six must go here because we've not put a six in this row and six is the uncolored digit which means six is in one of those two squares um <laughs> okay so now down here i know we've got th three i know we've got gray and we must have something else what's the something else is it we've got th we've got yellow why are, oh orange oh so orange is in one of those i could pencil mark it couldn't i why don't i orange is one of those what was the other yellow is in one of these and then the other digit was i've now lost track of it gray which can be in one of those two so this is very complicated. I suspect, I suspect it's going to be this one that we've got to focus on. But let me just mull that over for a, for a second or two and just let's think about what we can do. 
blue is in one of those squares. These squares are six and two colours that I should be able to get. Purple and orange. Oh, it's no good. Can we... Can we do anything else? <laughs> I don't know. Um, what about... All right, let's try this row where we have got quite a lot of real estate, haven't we? Well, where's blue in this row? Blue can't be those squares, so that's blue. That's going to be good. Right, so what are these? One of these is going to be six, and one of these is a colour that we've not put in yet, which is red. Where does red go? Red goes in the circle. So this is a six, and that means that's not a six, which means six is up in one of those two squares which means six in this column now is in one of those three squares. And it must be relatively hard for it to be um, on the arrow. If six is on the arrow, this arrow is at least adding up to eight. Right. Bingo McBingo face. Where does blue go in box five? And it goes on a nine. So blue has become nine. Now, how does that work with the world? That puts nine in one of those two squares and nine in exactly that square. So that's lovely. We get a blue there, which means that's blue by the power of blueliness. That's therefore not blue anymore. And we have done all of, out of absolutely nowhere, we've done all of the nines. And it must be jolly difficult now to put a six on this arrow, because if you do put six on it, well, if that's a six, that's definitely not a six. <laughs> if that's a six, this is at least a one, two pair, and that is nine, that would put two nines in the box. So therefore we get a six here, we get a six here. Therefore that square down there is not now, whatever colour this is going to have to be. So this is a 4-5 pair, which means this square here has got to be the 4-5. This square is not now green. Um, this is not 6. And if we put 6 on here now, how can we make that work with this? This would have to be 8. Ah, beautiful. Right. That's absolutely beautiful. So if you put six on here, in either position, because this can't be nine, you'd have to make it eight, and you'd have to put double one on this arrow. But we can't put double one on this arrow, because one of those squares is a one. And if we put double one, however we do it, we're ruling one out of both of those squares. So if we don't put six up here, we put six up here, which means this is six, this is not six, so this now is light green. Oh, come on, come on now. This is light green by the power of Greyskull, a.k.a. Sudoku, which seems to position a three up here, which is not... No, no, we're not going to get any threes in the corner. Ah, naughty. Um, now this is three by the... Oh, look, well, two things. That's three, because it has to be. But that took the pencil mark of this grey thing, so that square is now a one or a two green in this box goes here, the, 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 the one or two digit. So this digit's quite big. Yeah, okay. This digit has to be a four because it can't be one, two, and it can't repeat three. And it can't be greater than four because we need to keep this down to a maximum of eight. So in fact, therefore, we can fill this in. That's got to be four. That's got to be one. That's got to be eight. And eight is now red out of nowhere. Um... Right, now this is light Light green is now 1. We've just worked that out. So we can double click those, turn all of those into 1s. Have we got all of them we have now? We can make all of the grey digits. Oh, we've got to be a bit careful with that. They are all 2 now. So those all become 2. Um, which gives us a 2 here we hadn't earned before. And oh dear, we can't quite do all the 2s, but we nearly could. Um, and what else do we get? We get a four here. Okay, that makes that makes the green cells five. Um, and it see, look, 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 look. 
purple has just become four out of nowhere so we can do that uh, by sudoku let's double click the fours make them all purple orange is now seven by the looks of things so oh hang on we'll be careful about that all of those turn into sevens seven in the corner so that's another orange that we've earned this is an orange that we've earned these two squares are four and six which we can do okay so we put we put a four in the corner and a six here which is the uncolored digit isn't it that's probably been available for ages i now see but i didn't spot that before um what about this box it needs a seven what about yeah where does seven go in the middle box it's got to go here and that means we get the two as well which is the gray digit which means we get the gray digit down here that's got to be the two that's got to be the seven therefore that's got to be the three we'll color this all up in a moment or two this is now an eight and this square is three okay so we can double click all the threes and make them yellow double click all the seven oh hang on double click all the sevens and make those orange double click all the twos and make those gray double click all the eights and make those red and all we should be left with uncolored is six i'm just i'm just staring at this to check that was wonderful wasn't it it's taken me a while to get to grips with it but once i got to grips with it it was fascinating and it sort of felt smooth it was just very hard to understand initially right let's click oh no i've messed it up what have i done there oh okay it looks like that digit is the problem and i think that's going to have been that's, if that becomes a five it all looks like it works so let's just double check what i did yeah okay look 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 i can see that that's a green digit and it shouldn't so why is it being made a seven how did that happen let's go back go back go back it was a five and then somehow i highlighted oh i know what i did i tried to highlight I tried to highlight these digits, the, 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 the three orange sevens, and I've picked up this in the highlighting and changed it to a seven, which was silly of me, but affects no other logic. And that is a relief, because that means that that square, once I fiveify it and greenify it, I'm guessing it likes me more, and indeed it does. Solve count 29. Okay, so this must be quite a newish puzzle, I'm guessing, then, because um, people are solving it as we speak. It's, it's going places. So wormholes, that was very, very... Oh, it's crazy. It's a crazy world set, <laughs> but fiendishly clever. And, um, and actually, on reflection, a puzzle I'm reasonably pleased to have solved because I had no idea how it worked at the start. And my intuition was completely wrong um oh i was going to count wasn't i so let's count how many um how many of these cells are actually uh wormholes in this box so uh six is the middle cell of which box so six is ne six never appears in a middle cell actually so that can't be nine does that appear in a middle yes but it's not in that position it's there in the middle isn't it seven so maybe the count for this box is zero which is maybe why it's been missed out four where's four no that's not in the right position that eight's clearly not referencing that cell is it this one um no this three no this five no and this two uh well it's clearly not <laughs> no okay so perhaps that's why these haven't been given is that they just don't add to the quantum of knowledge in terms of wormholes i certainly am not seeing i mean this could be referencing itself that is true six can't be referencing anything 
that's not right yeah okay so I think just my intuition at the start was wrong and my thoughts that maybe there are 27 entrances to wormholes <laughs> and nine exits was complete and utter cobblers and I apologize for leading you down that garden path but anyway let me know in the comments how you got on with this let me know if you understood the rules and we'll be back later with another edition of cracking the cryptic